Hey everybody, it's Jackie, um, and in this video we are going to talk about making a sculpture project. Um, so this is the example that I have made. Um, you can see it is nine inches long, um, and I have one, two, three, four, five planes in this direction, and then I have three serial planes in the opposite direction. Um, there's no glue holding this together. Uh, the only thing that is holding this together is the paper and the way that it has been joined together. Um, and that, in essence, is your challenge for the sculpture project. You will make a sculpture, you will use the Bristol paper, Serial planes, it must be at least nine inches in the longest dimensions, um, and no glue. All right, so I'm going to show you how I made this, um, and yeah, let's get started. Okay, I have all of my supplies laid out. I'm going to start by taking a fresh sheet of the Bristol. Now I am measuring out six inches on my piece of paper. I'm making my model slightly smaller um, than you will need to make yours. I've drawn a nice curve to start and I'm thinking this is going to be um, the shape that I will start with. I'm cutting it out with my X-Acto blade. You can also use a pair of scissors if that's easier for you. So I'm going to start by just cutting this out really quickly with my scissors. Now I'm just going to clean up the edges with my kneaded eraser and using my X-Acto blade I will just tidy up some of these rough edges so I've got nice curves all around my form. Taking my ruler, I am going to make a little mark at each of the inch marks along the bottom of my shape. Now I'm doing a second set of little dashes, each one inch apart. Um, and now I'm going to connect the lines so that I have vertical lines that are each one inch apart on my form. Now I'm going to trace the shape that I just cut out and using my ruler I'm going to measure down about a half an inch every so often along the curve. So you can see I'm kind of tracing the form here um, but I'm making a smaller form inside the shape that I just cut out. So I'm just sort of eyeballing and putting a little dash 
a half inch down um, every so often. Using my pencil, I'm connecting all of the dash marks that I just made, smoothing out the form as I go, and you'll see what is going to result is um, a smaller version of the shape that I have just cut out. Using my scissors, I will carefully cut out this smaller form. Lining my new shape up with the previous shape, I am going to mark off um, the one inch guidelines with my pencil on the new smaller shape. And now I have two shapes, each with one inch verticals, and you can see that one is slightly smaller than the other. I am tracing my second shape on a clean area of my bristle. Uh, this way I will have um, three serial planes, one tall shape in the center, and then either side of the tallest shape will be um, a little bit smaller than my center rib. And if this is confusing, just stay with me for a minute. Um, it should become clear as I continue working. If I hold up my three shapes for you, um, you can kind of see how the one in the center is the tallest, and then the other two shapes are just a little bit smaller. And here I am labeling all of the verticals. Um, so I'm starting with the small shape, the first one, and I am labeling them A1, B1, C1, D1, and E1. And the second shape, they are labeled A2, B2, and on and on. And then in the third shape, they are labeled A3, B3, C3, etc.
Now I'm getting a new piece of bristle and I am going to measure one inch along both of the sides of my bristle um, and draw vertical lines. So I'm recreating um, the one inch space that I've drawn on all three of my shapes so far. Here's where things get interesting. To create the cross section, I am going to take three measurements for each of my three pieces. So I'm starting by measuring A1, and I'm putting a little mark on the first vertical where A1 aligns with it. Now I'm taking the second shape, and on the second vertical, I'm gonna mark off where A2 hits the paper, and I will do the same thing for A3 on my sheet of paper. So now I have three points, and I am going to connect these three points with the edges of the form here. So you can see now I'm roughing out the curve for the cross section. Using my scissors, I will cut out this shape. Now I'm going to repeat the process, but this time the three measurements I'm taking will be for each of the B verticals. So I will start with B1, B2, and then B3. Once I have little marks for each of these, I will connect them and cut them out. Now I'm measuring about an inch or so up from the bottom of each of the three shapes that I started with. And I will do the same thing on the two cross sections that I've just created. Starting from the top, I'm cutting down um, but stopping at the line that I've just drawn. I will use this to create the ribs. 
on the cross section, I am cutting from the bottom up to the line that I've created. This way, when I join the two pieces together, they should fit snugly. I'm cutting from the bottom for each of the verticals for my cross section and repeating this process along the opposite rib, cutting from the top of the other three shapes. This will create interlocking joints between my different pieces of paper. So you can see I can slide one shape onto the other and it should rest in place. I will repeat the same process, cutting from the bottom for my cross section, and then cutting from the top along the three ribs. Then I'll use these different cuts to lock the pieces of paper in place. You can see that when the curve and the overall sculpture is much larger, the ribs and the cross section stay together much more easily. To recap, you are going to use this process to create a three-dimensional abstract form that uses serial planes. Your sculpture should be a minimum of nine inches in the longest dimension. You should use a minimum of four serial planes for each of the cross sections and the ribs. You will construct your sculpture out of the white Bristol paper that came in your art kit, and your sculpture should be able to stand on its own once it is completed. Naturally, when using serial planes, you should incorporate repetition and gradation of size and or shape. 
In the video I've just shown you, I created three shapes that go up and then back down in size. And finally, no glue allowed. The way that the paper will fit together should be the system that locks your sculpture in place. Once you have completed your sculpture, take photos of it from different points of view so that we can see how your sculpture exists in space. Good luck, everybody. And remember, if you have questions, please email me or visit me during office hours.